What's up everybody, how's it going? Jason Boone here from premiumbeat.com. Today I'm gonna to teach you about automation modes in Adobe Premiere Pro's audio track mixer panel. Let's get started. So working with automation modes is a bit of an advanced topic. So to make sure we don't get lost, I'm gonna quickly go over a few of the fundamentals of working with audio in Premiere Pro. So first, let's make sure we have our workspace set up properly. Make sure you have your audio track mixer set up here and as well as your timeline. These are the two main panels we're gonna be working in. If you can't see these, just go to window and select audio track mixer. Now, if you look over here, you can see we're looking at the same thing here. We have two audio tracks here on our timeline. And if you look at our audio track mixer, these two tracks correspond, these two channels here correspond to these two audio tracks. And then we have a master track, which you can find down here. But for instance, if we were to change this name over here, you can see it says audio one, audio two. So if we change this to music and hit enter, you look down here, see it corresponds here. This just changed the name to music while our audio track two is still audio two. If we wanted to change the name, we could simply change it over here. Now the automation mode drop-down menu is in the audio track mixer panel and they're right above the fader bars here on each channel. Now, if you flip those down, you'll see there's five different automation modes. Now only three of these automation modes will record on the fly. Now what do I mean by record? Well, it's when you are playing your video back or your audio back, you can make adjustments to that audio and it will record them. And it records them as track keyframes. Now before we get a little too confused here, there's a difference between clip keyframes and track keyframes. So let me show you the difference. If you go down here to the audio header section of the timeline, there's a little show keyframes button. So let's open this up. We're basically going to change our view here from clip keyframes to track keyframes. So right now we're looking at clip keyframes. And if you look over here in our clips, you'll see rubber bands on each clip. And we can add keyframes to these. But again, these are just clip keyframes that we're adding. So we can select track keyframes and we're going to select volume. Now watch what happens to the rubber bands on our timeline here. You'll notice that this switched to one main rubber band. So now we're looking at a uh, rubber band for the track. So any keyframes we make here are, are basically going to change the in, entire track. So that's what we want to have on both of our tracks here. We want to be looking at the track keyframes. So there we switch this one as well. Now you'll notice that by default, all of our tracks and channels are set to read automation mode, which is the default. Now read is as simple as it sounds. It's gonna read any track keyframes that are in those tracks and adjust accordingly. But right now we don't have any track keyframes. But if, if we were to make an adjustment to our volume here, it's just gonna change the entire track uniformly. So let's have a listen here. And watch our, watch our rubber band correspond as we move our fader bar. If we move it up to six, it's going to go up. We're going to move it back down to zero. So it's simply reading uniformly what we're doing here. So our next automation mode is off. And when you have your automation mode set to off, it's just going to disregard all of the track keyframes and it will allow you to make adjustments without any interference from those track keyframes. And as you'd expect, it does not record or make any changes when set to the off mode. So now let's switch to an automation mode that's actually gonna create some track keyframes for us. If we go up here on audio track one, I'm gonna switch it to the right automation mode. And now what right automation is gonna do is it's just gonna basically record at all times on that particular track. So anytime I make any kind of adjustment on this fader bar, it's gonna add some track keyframes. So let me show you, I'm gonna go ahead and play back and I'm gonna start to move this fader bar around. Now I'm gonna release and then I'm gonna stop. And if we zoom in here on the timeline, look what happened, it added a ton of track keyframes. Now, here's the thing about write. It's constantly writing. So if I were to go back, and you can see our fader bar is at negative three, five here. Uh, watch what happens if I hit play. And I'm just not going to touch that fader bar at all. Then I'm gonna stop and look what happened. So it was writing. So it basically over, overwrote what we had going on there. 
So now let me show you how you can kind of get around this. If you go up to the panel menu here, the audio track mixer panel menu, and you go down, there's a section here, or there's an option called switch to touch after write. And that basically means it's going to switch to the touch automation mode after you have write selected, which is a good thing. So you, you have your write automation mode, you make your changes, and then it's automatically going to switch out of that write mode so you don't uh, accidentally uh, record over anything. So let, let me show you what's going to happen here. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to play. We're in write mode. I'm going to make some changes. And I'm going to release. And then I'm going to stop. All of our keyframes are added down here, but now look back up here. It switched our automation mode to touch. Just as I said, that's a good kind of uh, fail safe, keep you from accidentally recording over. So now that leads us to the touch automation mode. So what is touch exactly? Well, touch is pretty much identical to the right mode. When you play it back and you move that fader bar around, it's gonna make those adjustments, it's gonna add those track keyframes, but the second you release or I let go of that fader, uh, that fader bar, it's going to automatically match it to whatever value I had set at the beginning of the automation. So I know that might sound like a lot, but let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to drag the playhead over here. I'm going to hit play. Okay, and if you see, I'm waiting a couple of seconds, and then I'm going to grab here now. And I'm going to just drag it down. And watch what happens. I'm going to release it. And on its own, it's going back up to that value. I'm going to drag down again, drag up. Now watch, I'll release it. And it's going back. It's doing what's called an auto match of that time there. But now let's go back and look what happened. You'll notice, unlike the right mode, it didn't start recording until I grabbed that fader bar right here. And then it started making all these adjustments. And it was basically, as, as I said before, in touch mode, it automatically matches that value that you started off with. And there's another preference here. You can actually change under preferences audio. If you look here at the top, it says auto match time, one second. And what that is basically doing is telling you is that it takes one second right here to go back and auto match that time that started off right here. So touch mode is pretty cool. So now let's go to our last mode, which is latch. Now latch is very similar to write and touch, but the fact that it doesn't do that auto match, it's basically latching to the time. It's not auto matching and returning to your first uh, volume level at the beginning of the automation. So let's show, let me show you here. We're going to play back and we're going to grab it. Let's say we move it down and I release it now and it's going to latch to that point. And I'll move it up. It's latching there. Move it down and stop. And you can see here, added all of our keyframes, keyframes here, latching, latching. So those are your automation modes. So let me go back here. You can see. Now, the last thing I want to make note of is that if you zoom in and look at all these keyframes, there's just an insane amount of keyframes. And if you've ever used automation modes before and you try to go back and make some adjustments, it's just crazy. It's almost impossible trying to, you know, get all these keyframes to do what you want. So if you want to have fewer keyframes recorded during these automation modes, you can go back to the audio section here and there's an automation keyframe optimization. So if you change these, you can kind of uh, adjust you know, the, the number of keyframes that are added. So that, my friends, is the automation modes in Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high-quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all your media and video projects.